what powers should our Scottish Parliament have? Well, originally, the Scottish Parliament did have considerable powers over things that matter, like the ability to rescue failing workplaces and take them into public ownership, and even the ability to own public services that were important to daily life. However, these powers were largely lost, as the European Union increasingly developed its competition policy that outlawed most state aid and the comprehensive public ownership of public services. Take a second to think about the consequences of this. Electric power, for instance, is important for everything from dealing with climate change all the way down to everyday usage of it by millions of families for heating and light. So who owns Scotland's biggest supplier of electric power, Scottish power? Iberdrola does, a Spanish registered firm. So who owns Iberdrola? The largest shareholders are the Emir of Qatar and BlackRock, the world's biggest investment company. Ask yourself this, why would a private enterprise ever think of the long-term effects of climate change when it is owned by a dictator of one of the world's largest fossil fuel producing countries? Or why would a private enterprise whose only goal is to maximize profits for its shareholders care about increasing the price of power that would negatively affect millions of Scots? Or why would it ever expand its services into deprived rural areas that need their services when it's more profitable not to? We need public Scottish ownership of our main sources of power, so it can serve the needs of the consumers, the economy, and the climate here in Scotland. The Scottish Trade Union Congress, and almost all Scottish trade unions, are committed to the public ownership of public services. So was, in terms of its 2019 manifesto, the Labour Party. Yet virtually all public services, power, transport, telecommunications, postal deliveries, are currently in private hands. Dominant shareholders are investment companies driven to maximize profits by the demands of their investors. We see the results in terms of rocketing prices and in the way these firms treated their workers during COVID, like British Gas and British Telecom, who both used fire and rehire during one of the most tumultuous times in generations. Turn on your heating, post a letter, get on a bus or use the internet, and you soon realize who pays and who benefits. It is no longer the job of a bus to get you somewhere on time. The only function a bus serves in the way our society is organized is to line the pockets of private individuals and damn the consequences. So what's the position now that we've left the EU? Have these powers come back to the Scottish Parliament? No, they haven't. They're now in the hands of Westminster, and the deal signed by Johnson with the EU means these powers cannot be used. The EU rules against public ownership were copy-pasted into British law. And what else could you expect from the political descendants of Margaret Thatcher and the Tory party? The Trade and Cooperation Treaty says this on telecommunications. The provisions on telecommunication regulation lock in existing levels of liberalization in UK and EU markets, confirming both sides as leadership in this area and our commitment to openness. The provision on authorization is the most liberalized authorization regime agreed in any FTA. And on postal services, it says, the agreement confirms the party's commitment to open and fair markets and delivery services. It promotes trade in postal and delivery services. Similarly with power, it states, competition in markets and non-discrimination with the objective of ensuring fair competition. And also in transport, the agreement provides additional market access rights for UK and EU passenger transport operators above and beyond what is provided by the multilateral intrabus agreement. This is why Rose, Radical Options for Scotland and Europe, provides Stuck's People's Recovery Program that calls for public ownership of utilities. Our Scottish Parliament needs these powers of economic intervention. We call on the Scottish Government to defend these basic services from exploitation by big business and demand that the Westminster Government amend the terms of the Single Market Act.